uh, registrar, uh, dean, colleagues, and friends. It's um, it's really a great honor to be invited to respond at to, at, to this inaugural address here at the University of Johannesburg of my valued colleague and my very dear friend. In fact, I hope I hit the right button. My... <laughs> My oldest friend. <laughs> Thanks very much to Paul Mills, who excavated that out of the archive for us. Um, now, the deeply creative, completely reliable, and intense girlhood friend who kept me in line, I must tell you, with plat pulling and arguments as fierce as my own, is now my and your deeply intelligent, highly productive, entirely principled, stellar professor. And my guess is that metaphorically, she's still a fierce puller of plats when the occasion <laughs> demands. And I know that her arguments are only all the more astute these days. Now, there can be no one amongst us who does not appreciate the value and thoughtfulness of Brenda's scholarship as demonstrated tonight. It goes to the heart of the paroxysms that rack the South African university system at the moment. Now, at a time when the Japanese are closing down their humanities faculties and their arts faculties, when science and technology actually floods the, sp the space of planning for the future, and when humanities generally are under threat, we are in danger of killing off the research that we most need to navigate relationships, re relationships amongst ourselves, amongst us as fellow human beings. Now, the prescient humanities and arts scholars begin the necessary research well in advance of the hour of its most urgent need. Brenda, in fact, was my guest at the UCT campus to present her research on the visual representation of roads and the visual culture of South African universities in May 2011, four years before the forced removal of the infamous statue. Now, in her inaugural address, Brenda recognizes that the removal of the UCT road statue was probably the only feasible step, she says, in the face of a protest where much more than simply the statue was at stake. But her address draws us back a step or two from the political precipice to oblige us to think carefully and more carefully again about what she calls, and it's really a big phrase from her address, the slippery terrain of evaluating art, especially in this charged environment of transformation. Removal, she, su she suggests, may just be too easy and not substantial enough, not reflective enough, not generative enough. Now, I think Brenda has earned the right to call for more because that is a call that she has always responded to. It's a call which her own work testifies to. to. Her own wor work never takes the easy route. She's never balked at an intellectual challenge. Now, one of Brenda's publications that takes no easy route is on the work of the Kaiskama Art Project which you saw in her address in the Rhodes um, Council Chamber. That's a project deep in the heart of rural Eastern Cape. The work that she deals with most recently, in the words that are preferred by the project itself, is a lament for the dead, for the injustices of our health system, and the staggering grief experienced in Eastern Cape villages today. Now, that particular tapestry, the Kaiskama Guernica, leverages off Picasso's painful Guernica. But, as Brenda shows so skillfully, in ways deeply embedded in and resonant with the history of the Eastern Cape. Brenda's analysis does justice to this complex work because of the more that she pours into understanding what it, this extraordinarily potent work, is in the world today. <coughs> now, there'll be those of you who are present tonight who know her work, 
who know that full body of work that undergirds this professorship. Well, effectively, I think something like a double professorship now. It's a prodigious body of work, and, uh, and Fed told us, six books, two exhibitions, I think it's over 50 scholarly articles. So you who know me will be able to join me in testifying um, to those who have not read it what an impressive body of work it is. Now the range, the sheer range of Brenda's work is truly breathtaking. There are those early interventions on Roy Lichtenstein's critique of modernism, and then she goes on to engage the visual in the politics of everything from gender to Zimbabwean land struggles. I spent the early part of this week reading recent publications that I had not yet encountered. Brenda's work is marked by crystalline clarity of thought and writing and a rigor of research that few of us can equal. It's thorough and it's meticulous. It's work to be relished and relied on. In the current crisis, her latest research on the visual culture of the universities is a timely humanities gift to us all. It's one that I imagine that the beleaguered vice chancellor, one of whom couldn't be here tonight, will we'll really value, as well as the thoughtful students will want to grapple with. We have to wonder why this kind of work and other similar work which universities laud is not research which the universities, we, take on board in relation to ourselves. So when I return tomorrow to UCT, it will be to work on the university task team to assess artworks on display across the campus, artworks that have been identified by the Roads Must Fall movement as problematic. Schmarman 2013 is prescribed reading for the entire committee. <laughs> Radical students and academics alike. But Brenda, I would not want us simply to read Schmarman on the portraits and statues of white males but also to understand the recuperative and suturing work of women in applique, tapestry, and embroidery in small craft projects across Southern Africa, and to understand what it means to bring into a single frame these different worlds, the world of the university and the craft project, to seek ourselves to inhabit that same shared frame, to factor in matters of gender and class and indeed sexual preference, where race occupies the central space, is a task that many of the pro protesting students have committed themselves to. And the manner of its refraction through art is potent matter. It's far from easy. In this professorship, Registrar Dean, the University of Johannesburg has a scholar of exceptional distinction with the research expertise, the intellectual depth and range, and the integrity to handle potent matter, and to help shape and renew humanities and arts thought at an extraordinary time. Thank you. The University of Johannesburg. Rethink. Reinvent.